CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you from off the coast of France. And I just want to talk to you tonight about how recovery from CFS is like the Rosetta Stone. And you know, there were times at the beginning of this illness where I was completely lost. I had no idea what was going on with my body and no one around me could help me. And you know, when you're in that situation, you've also got the symptom, a neurological symptom we call brain fog. So it's really hard to figure things out and understand what's going on with the illness and to research and do the things that normally um, you would do when you have an illness. CFS is a really unpredictable illness and so it was really challenging for me to understand you know, what was happening, why it was happening, why my life had been stolen for me. And so you know, I found it interesting, we were in London and we went to the British Museum and saw the Rosetta Stone, which I'd always hoped to see one day, and it's a big stone tablet and on it are three different languages. You know, I just felt like there was a real parallel for us in this because the three languages are, there was ancient Greek, Egyptian hieroglyphs, and Demotic. And the thing about it is the whole Egyptian culture was lost to us until they were able to use those two different languages on the stone to decode what the hieroglyphs said. Because I, they were saying all the same thing, it was a proclamation. And by comparing one language to another, they were able to figure it out. So in a lot of ways, CFS is like those hieroglyphs. It's a foreign tongue, nobody understands it, but as we compare our journeys with others that have recovered, we'll begin to understand some of the underlying grammar of the illness and also even better ways to navigate our way out of the illness. So we'll just be using the same strategy that they did to use the other languages to break the code of the hieroglyphs. So the great thing about this is what was once a complete mystery to us becomes more in focus and we're able to figure out what we need to do to move forward. So basically, I just invite you to listen to as many recovery stories as you possibly can. I know when I was bed bound, I used to listen to them over and over and write down little notes on things that I could learn from other people's journeys because though they were different, I could always find some similarity and there was always something that I could learn from someone else's recovery journey. I used to keep a list as well of all the treatments that I heard about that could help CFS So, because when you're so brain foggy and you don't know what your next step is, and believe me, I know it feels like it goes so slow getting from one thing to the next. Being able to even just get to the doctor for a blood test can be so challenging, but the thing is, um, as you keep a list, like I just kept a list of all kinds of different things I would hear and then once I tried, I would just go down and after I tried one thing, I would try another and if that didn't work, I knew that I had more treatments on the list that I could go through to get my life back. Now there are two things that watching recovery stories will do for you and it's really important is number one, it will build your belief in recovery. I've talked to so many people and I know it's so challenging after months and years, I mean some people 15, 20, 30 years of being ill, they've lost hope. They don't believe that they can recover. So listening to other people's recovery stories will really help build that muscle of belief and you're gonna need that in order to muster up your inner resources, your tenacity, your determination, your courage, and your persistence to keep going and keep trying things and move forward in recovery. The second thing it will do in listening to the recovery story is help you break the codes, give you an idea of a direction to move in and some plans to follow and help you move forward in recovery. There are lots of places to find these recovery stories. Check out YouTube channels like CFS Health, uh, Freedom from ME, which is Optimum Health Clinics, CFS Unraveled, and I also listened a lot to Secrets to Recovery because they have a lot of recovery stories on there, and those would really encourage me. There's also a book called 50 Stories of CFS Recovery, and it's got an Olympic champ that had CFS on the cover, so that's a really good one to have by, nearby your bed, so you can always turn to it for ideas and encouragement. And there are other resources that you can use to help you decode CFS, like Dr. Sarah Myhill's work on mitochondria dysfunction and Stanford's leading research that they're doing now. And also there was a book called Fatigue to Fantastic that I read by Dr. Tenenbaum, and he was a medical doctor that had ME. And then he came back and wrote this book. It's very science and medical approach, but also about supplements. So it's a really good resource. 
So I really encourage you to be a student of recovery. Learn as much as you can from others who have been on the journey, suffered with CFS, and have come through out the other side. And I know in time you're going to be able to decode your Rosetta Stone. So take care, warriors, and remember, life's not over, it's starting again. This is so magical. It's like something out of a fairy tale. I know. Why would you want to move? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I just love that. Have you got a couple minutes to come in the house? Yes, I would love to. I'm sure I'd be home and I can yes. have a little wonder with my nice things. The little guy's moving now. I guess he's like our little escort out of the harbor. He's like, hi. in front of you. I got to chill.